okay so we understand about how we can calculate resultant forces in different situations now we move on to newton laws in that newton first law what is newton first law actually newton first law is little modification of galileo's inertia definition so newton first law states that until and unless an external force external force acts on a body it is at rest state or in uniform motion so this is same definition given away galilei also but little difference galilei told that it's a tendency of a body to be in rest or to be in uniform motion but newton added that this tendency only possible until unless an external force acts on the body so when the external force acts immediately the body change its state it change its state of rest or it change its state of uniform motion for example take this ball on the ground it is actually rest state now if we apply force on the ball immediately the ball rolls that means the body comes into motion because the application of force comes into motion suppose a block actually moving now you have applied a force on the block and after some time the block comes to stop means block now into rest state that means you are changing the motion to rest state so in these two cases you are changing from rest to motion here from motion to rest and all these changes are possible because of application of force so until and unless an external force acts on the body the body is in rest state and the body in uniform motion but when the external force acts the body will change their states right now see the relationship between inertia and mass then what is the surprise thing is what is the relationship between inertia and mass yes there is a relationship i will tell you see suppose there is a big rock and there is a small stone now you applied same force on the big rock and small stone which will come into motion obviously small stone because of lesser mass mass is less whereas this block doesn't come into motion because mass is large as this body or the big rock not comes into motion because of big mass because of big mass it 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 is in the same state of rest that means it is in the inertia state only because of larger mass larger inertia lesser mass lesser inertia so we can say mass is measurement of inertia more the mass more the inertia lesser the mass lesser the inertia right so we understand about what is newton's first law now we have to know about what is newton second law before going to newton second law i will introduce a different physical quantity in this chapter and that quantity is momentum because we should know what is momentum before knowing what is newton second law because newton has got the idea of second law because of this physical quantity so he started thinking like this suppose you take a small stone this is a small stone and this is a big stone okay now you have thrown the small stone and you have thrown the big stone both with the same force both with the same force so the mass is very small 
here here the mass is larger mass now my question is that which body will move with higher speed yes obviously lesser mass lesser mass body moves faster than the big mass that means here the velocity is large here the velocity is small so lesser the mass more the velocity more the mass lesser the velocity so this strike an idea into newton's mind that mass is inversely proportional to velocity more the mass lesser the velocity lesser the mass more the velocity so then what he's done they has taken v to the left hand side m into v and he changed the proportionality with the equal to with a constant p and this p is called momentum so momentum defined as product of product means multiplication product of mass and velocity so momentum p equals to m into v this is the important formula and momentum is a vector quantity it has both magnitude and direction now if you would take the units of momentum cgs and si so mass into velocity na mass cgs unit is gram velocity cgs unit is centimeter per second so gram centimeter per second now si unit mass is kg and velocity is meter per second the unit is kg meters per second now take an example numerical there is a car whose mass is 1000 kg 1000 kg move with a velocity of 0.2 meters per second then find its momentum yes now how do you find see the formula p equal to m, m into v so momentum p equal to mv mass is 1000 into velocity is 0.2 meters per second so it is nothing but one decimal zero is cancelled so 200 kg meter per second this is the answer i take the second example there is a ball of mass 2 kg moving with the momentum 15 kg meters per second then calculate its velocity as you know the formula p equals to m into v implies i am asked to find velocity so velocity v equal to take m this side momentum by mass so momentum is 15 kg meters per second mass is 2 kg so it's nothing but 7.5 meters per second so this is what the velocity right so we understand about momentum now based on momentum isaac newton has derived the second law he stated the second law what is newton second law he states that an external force external force means unbalanced force an external force acts on a body is directly proportional to rate of change of momentum this is the statement of newton second law right external force acting the body so f is the external force directly proportional so directly proportional symbol rate of change of momentum remember rate means always it is with respect to time so it will be comes in the denominator delta t divided by delta t means rate change of momentum means delta p 
delta is triangle symbol it represents change so force external force is directly proportional to rate of change of momentum then to remove the proportionality we use a constant k into delta p by delta t later isaac newton proved that the k value equals to 1 implies f equals to delta p by delta t so this is newton second law so far we stated newton second law and we have shown the formula f equal to delta p by delta t now for based on that formula newton has derived another formula called f equal to mba which is very famous and frequently we use when we are doing the calculations in this chapter so let me derive f equal to mba formula so newton second law we know that f equal to delta p by delta t and you also know that momentum p equal to m into v p equal to m into v therefore f equals to delta instead of p substitute the p formula mv by delta t now f equals to delta means i told change so change in mass change in velocity generally when you apply force on, on any body body mass generally doesn't change only its velocity change so mass taken to the left uh, take to take it take it from the bracket outside m delta v by delta t equal to m f equal to m now see this fraction delta v by delta t are you remembering anything delta v means v2 minus v1 change in velocity delta t means time so change in velocity by time is what yes it is acceleration so acceleration a equal to delta v by delta t we learned in the previous chapter so f equals to m a so this is the formula and derivation from newton's second law now here if you see the units new units for force cgs and si unit okay first of all cgs unit mass gram acceleration centimeter per second square gram centimeter per second square is also called dyne d y n e this is another unit for force in cgs system now coming to si mass is kilogram acceleration is meter per second square but this kilogram meter per second square is also called newton already we using this unit newton so generally force unit means in cgs we say dynes in si we say newton so there is a relationship between dyne and newton and it is 1 newton equals to 10 to the power of 5 dynes